this video is going to be about my version 2 coil winder. I updated the design to use stepper motors that were a little faster to just kind of speed the whole process up as I was tired of waiting about a minute to get a coil out of it. And then it also gave me an opportunity to rework the PCB as some things on the old PCB kind of got a little hot, mainly the um, voltage converter there. It got a little toasty if you would run it for too long, so with this model I got away from using just those basically voltage just dissipators that would just dissipate voltage into heat. And I went to a true um, buck converter this time. Unfortunately, my electronics knowledge is not there, so I just used a bot buck converter and just set the PCB up to accept one of them. So I set that up and then put together the PCB the PCB was to provided to me by PCBUA. More on them later. This version 2 incorporates two NEMA 17 motors, a standard size one to drive the main head, and a short stubby one to drive the threaded rod. I went with the standard size to drive the main head, as I didn't want to lose any torque there, as I had to go to a geared step down geared head here, as the last one didn't quite have enough torque and I could stall it out. So I figured adding some gear reduction here would allow me to gain a little more torque over the larger coils. As I would get larger coils, I would lose torque as I get further away from center. So the coil would essentially have leverage on the head. And so this was my way to gain torque and leverage back over the winding. And then I used the shallow stepper on the end here as it didn't need a ton of leverage as you gain a bunch of leverage when you use threads. So you're using a bunch of turns to move a very small amount. So you do gain leverage with just using threads. So it was okay for me to reduce torque out of the motor driving the lead screw here. Okay, and now a word from today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is not just another PCB manufacturer. They're your partner in bringing your electronic projects to life. With high quality, quick turnarounds and excellent customer support, They've been the go-to choice for hobbyists, students, and professionals alike. One of the best things about PCB Way is their incredible offer for new customers. You can get 10 PCBs of 100mm by 100mm for the low price of $0. You only pay for shipping. This is an incredible opportunity for anyone looking to dive into electronics without breaking the bank. So why wait? Turn your designs into reality with PCB Way. Visit PCBWay.com today to take advantage of this amazing offer and find out more about their wide range of services. Back to the video. The head itself, it runs on a M8 threaded rod and an M8 solid rod. There's two M8 nuts that are pressed into the head, and then there's this linear bearing that unfortunately does not fit into this as I had to order some new ones. But it rides on the linear bearing, and then the threaded rod pushes on the nuts and moves it back and forth either way. I incorporated loop systems on this head for wires to go through. So the wire comes up through the main loop, and then it comes underneath the head, and then out the little kind of nozzle here. And this just makes it where once it keeps, once it moves either way, it kind of keeps the wire fed in a straight line up to the winder. So that way I can have the coil offset a little bit, my big magnet coil offset a little bit, and it'll still wind pretty reasonably, and it won't put a ton of strain on the wire. So the UI on this is a little different. I moved away from the thumbstick as it was just a very clunky control. And I did that because it was just what I had laying around. But this time I purposely used some buttons as I have a lot more stuff laying around now. I stuck with the same 16 by two LCD screen. It was just simple, it's easy. It uses an I2C connection, which is just four pins to the Nano. It's basically runs on the A4 and the A5 plus a power and a ground, so very simple two data connections and you have a fully functional LCD screen. So using a Nano, I don't have a ton of GPIO and I wanted to keep it open for any future developments I add to this. Um, so yeah, just I2C was the way to go for that for me. And I do have a bunch of these I2C displays laying around as well, so that also influenced my decision. So the main head here 
it rides on two bearings inside the A-frames here, and then that just kind of keeps things centered and lined up on the main shaft here. The belt is tensioned via these two swivel points. There's a swivel point at the bottom, and then the tension is held via the bolt attached to the NEMA motor and the bolt attached to the pulley. And those just allow me to keep the stepper kind of in a square alignment to this so that way I don't have an offset or angled belt trying to eat one side of a pulley off or another or put uneven tension on the belt to lead to jumping of steps. Some changes that I made over the last one like the the main head here is more of a lathe head. I got the design off of Thingiverse. Um, I'll put the design in the description and give credit to the designer of that. I don't know if they took the design from somewhere else or whatnot, or if it's patented or anything like that. I'm not sure, but um, I just want to give credit to where I found the design and where I used it from. So, yeah, um, I did not design this. I strictly pulled it from Thingiverse, but it is a very nice and clean way for me to attach multiple things here. And then I'm not building special hubs that have to go on every single coil that I build. I can just use this and attach to the coil and I'm done. So yeah, that's about all of the changes that I made to the coil winder. Um, so we'll sh I'll show you guys how it's working. Um, I'll wind a coil for you and that'll probably be it. I don't know that this video is going to be a super long video, but hopefully it's at least interesting. So yeah, on to that. Okay, well, that is all that I have for today. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, subscribe. It helps the channel grow, um, keeps the good content coming. So yeah, have a good one, guys.